Uh, let me say, what are my impressions? Yeah, of Austin Booker and just your relationship with him. Um, what are my impressions? He definitely has it physically. Um, he definitely has the tools, has a good knack, I would say, for pass rush. Um, I think kind of just observing him on the back end, I would just say it's more so of the details. I feel like for every rookie coming in, that's what that, that's the hardest thing to learn is the details, being able to communicate with the line, um, being able to be on one accord. I feel like stuff like that just takes turns, takes reps. But I feel like physically, there's, he, can, he can make a lot of plays. I feel like he'll be good for us. Just got to continue to progress mentally, learning the playbook, learning his calls, being able to communicate at a high level. And he'll be a great player for us. Jill, I know Matty talked about going into this training camp that the intensity would be there, be a physical camp. Have you felt that so far up to this point in camp? Um, have I felt it? It's hard to really say because I feel like all campus, like, I haven't been in a non-physical camp. So, I mean, I feel like it's just kind of part of the norm, when, especially when you get the pads on, guys are excited, guys are ready to play. Um, and, I mean, we've been competing. To me, it's been physical without pads. So, I mean, I feel like just adding the pads just brings even a more physical element. But at the end of the day, for us, it's not about trying to say it's going to be physical. We just got to go out there and play our style of ball. And, of course, that, that's, that's what we do. We just go out there, be physical, fly around, hit. I mean, that's, that's just what it is. I mean, it's like 35 days till your first game, until your first game, but is there any concern uh, that everybody's not together? Nah. I feel like our biggest thing is being healthy week one, not training camp. You don't, you don't win right now. You win when the games count on Sundays when guys are healthy. So, I mean, for me, as long as guys are taking care of their bodies, getting back right for them. To be available in the game, I feel like that's for me personally. That's all that. That's all that matters. Do you, do you feel like that's different from last year when you were integrating a lot of new pieces defensively? And people were injured. And you started week one a little slow, but because you guys played together last year, you, you feel more comfortable with people maybe missing some time in camp. Oh, uh, do I feel like that? Yeah, partly for sure. Um, I feel like because again, I feel like the guys that been out have been here. So I mean, it's not like they have to come in and learn anything or get up to speed. I mean, they're pretty much up to speed. I think it's just more of a Maybe a conditioning thing, getting getting out there, getting your legs and your wind up. But I mean, for the most part, I feel like for us, we were healthy going into the game, and nobody really left healthy those first couple of weeks. We were really, really banged up. So I mean, I feel like again, for me personally, I feel like just getting get into the dance is all that matters. Just trying to get guys healthy, get guys out of week one healthy, so we can progress into two and three into four. Because I know we had plenty of guys that fell off in the beginning of the year. I feel like because it was a physical, it was an intense camp. So I feel like. Um, on both sides, we got to do better. Take we got to do a better job taking care of our bodies. But I feel like again, we got to keep the main thing the main thing, and that's playing on Sundays. Jalen, did uh, excuse me, DJ Moore get paid? What did I think? I mean, you love to see it. I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't know what else it was to think outside of congratulations. And sure, I mean, he deserved it. He's been making plays at a high level since he came in the league. So I mean, it's not surprising at all to me. What do you think collectively? This is not. So you got locked in, and he's locked in. It feels mm -hmm. like there's like a real core forming on both sides of the ball. Does it does it feel like that to you when you see them committing to players like yourself and DJ Moore? Does it seem like that? Uh, yeah, you can say that as far as contracts go. I mean, at the end of the day, though, I feel my attitude is always nobody's expendable. I mean, just because you get extended, I mean, you can't get traded. So I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, you gotta come in here, man. You gotta you gotta win every day. I mean. The way that I see it is they, they're, they're still trying to replace me. If they have an opportunity to bring somebody better in here, they'll do that. So, I mean, at the end of the day, for me and what I tell the guys, we still got to come in here and win. We still got to come in here and do what we need to do. The paycheck, the contract, don't make you expendable. Jalen, the top 100 list came out and yeah. didn't make it on there. What, what do you make of that? <laughs> Point blank period. That's not – there ain't no way there's 100 guys. I mean, especially if we go going – by the seat, like, is it by season? Is it just by names, like the top hundred names in the league? Or is it like, how do you guys know that how how it goes? What is it? You guys voting? Ain't no, nah, yeah, no. No, I'm asking. Do you like it's it's from like last year, from 2023? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. There ain't no way. I don't know how you make Pro Bowl, All Pro, and you're not a top hundred guy. That's, I mean, I could have been 101, I guess, but Aaron Rodgers didn't even. Play in the season, he was voted. So, I mean, hey, everybody made mistakes. It ain't just the media that do it. Players, clearly, if they voted for this, they made some mistakes. But it is what it is. I mean, in the day, I know, I know, I know the truth, and it's okay. I got, I got some more for them. Stuff like that, though, like 
drive you? A little, uh, maybe not drive you, but does it just kind of feed? One hundred percent. It's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Um, yeah, no, it's disrespectful because I know I go out there and, and line up, and I know I know receivers go out there and can't say that I'm not one of the best people, to, like best player they played against. So I mean, just whatever it is, it happened. I mean, it doesn't doing it that wouldn't have just like moved me to where I feel like I'm complacent or anything. But just to see it, I mean. Ain't no way a hundred guys better. Ain't no way. And especially guys who didn't play, who were hurt, played half. Ain't no way. I'm sorry. Excuse my language. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Yeah, obviously, uh, one of your teammates, uh, Jonathan Owens, has been in Paris for the yeah. past week-ish. Have you been talking to him about that experience at all, or have you guys been watching any of Simone Biles' performances together? She's cold. Yeah, nah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like you kind of see greatness, and you, I feel like, for me at least, you... Like, take advantage of you. Because, know, I mean, I don't understand gymnastics. Like, I just see her doing all these flips, and I'm like, and she lands and make it look easy. I'm like, okay, she did her thing on that. Then, like, I kind of start watching everybody else. I'm like, no, nah, them flips don't look like her. So, <laughs> I think for me, kind of just, like, really learning about it, of course, talking to him and just him being being in support of his his wife. I feel like that's a beautiful thing to see because a lot of times you see uh, wives supporting their husbands, but for, I feel like, a husband to be there for his wife and to support her and being able to come back and share that experience, I feel like it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Jalen, Kevin told us to not necessarily read too much into individual reps during the Kevin who? Kevin Bear, okay. About uh, uh, good or bad reps. How are you as, as a team? What you mean by that? Well, he's... he's good or bad reps for what? If he breaks up a play or if a play is uh -huh. called on him, something like that, not to say it was a good or bad rep for him. How are you guys as a defense reading the input from the offense if you guys aren't looking at it that way? I mean, everybody has a different ways of looking at it, but that's exactly how I look at it. If God catches a pass on me, that ain't good enough. So, I mean, but again, I feel like there's, there's different ways. People, I feel like, kind of move or measure things differently. I mean, again, for me being a corner, that's how I measure. If I'm getting a lot of ball falls, getting a lot of passes caught on me, then that's not, that's not, that's not okay for, for me in um, my standard. I mean, I try to go as long as I can without getting up a pass. So, I mean, I feel like that's kind of how I do it. I can't say how he challenges himself. Of course, everybody challenges themselves in different ways. And I feel like, again, too, I feel like mainly speaking to playing smart and being smart, too, I feel like there's times where you don't want to go up against a bang-bang play if it's one of our top guys. I mean, it's not. So I feel like it kind of just depends, again, from what angle you're talking about. But um, there's definitely competition. There's also being smart in it, too. I mean, it's not going to be that serious for me to try to jump on somebody's back and potential or risk a potential injury just to try to break a pass up. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we all out here to compete, but again, we also got to get everybody to the dance. Have more specifically been repping against Keenan Allen mm -hmm. so much. Are there any ways in which competing with him feels different than, you know, competing with another wide receiver out there? Meaning what by competing? Uh, like when you're repping against him, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, does, you know, Keenan Allen does something that's different, mm -hmm. and feels in a different way. Is that level of competition any different? Yeah, because he plays, he plays different. He is different. His route running is different. His timing, the way he crafts his routes is different. So, I mean, definitely lining up, of course, there's you have to factor all that in. It's not like going to get certain receivers or kind of just knowing your personnel. It's not – you have to be a little more patient. And I find for me it's not something that I have to, like, force myself to do. It's just like, okay, you got to know who you're going against, know your personnel, be a little more patient, um, and really just play from there. But, I mean, at the end of the day, he's somebody I look at as a top guy in this league. So, I mean, every time I step up going against him, then I, I'm, I'm going to treat him accordingly. Jalen, you said you said you said early on that your job as a defense was to prepare Caleb for week yeah, one. Yeah, for sure. Two weeks into camp, defense is still ahead of the offense. What have you learned about Caleb as you guys have, have tried to push him and make him better? I mean, he's just gonna keep growing. I feel like at the end of the day, he knows again how I feel like he knows the time that we have until week one. But he's also having having a sense of urgency with it as well. Um, I mean, again, for us, it's just about making it challenging on him, um, allowing him to grow against a good defense, not just grow within the offense and learn the offense, but also feeling that level of competition um, as well and getting all that at the at the same time. I think for us, that that's just that's part of our job to try to prepare him, whether it's trash talk, whether it's giving different looks, whether it's being in tight windows, tight coverage, whatever it may be. I feel like we're trying to give him um, everything that he's going to see on Sunday, and I feel like he's responding well. Just got to keep going. Thanks, Jay. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Cole was telling him he, he can tell his Run game is looks pretty good so far. You know, I know it's obviously hard in camp. You're not tackling. Are you? Can you feel it a little bit? And, and if so, how can you kind of tell that it's, it's looking good? Yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like we 
it's it's a work in progress, but definitely we had a, a couple good days. Um, always room for improvement, but um, I would say so. Yeah, it's, it's looking good. What are some of the things that you look for when you're watching film that tell you it's even though there's not live tapping that tell you it's it's working? Uh, technique, um, reads, stuff like that, making sure my eyes is in the right place. Um, but as a running back group collectively, I feel like just just improving each day with the technique, with the reads, with the um. Stuff like that, the uh, the tracks, the points we supposed to, just the little things, little details that we focus on, pre-snap, how the pitcher change, post-snap, um, making the right reads after that type of stuff. But I feel like as a running back group, we, you know what I mean, on the right track. A lot of moving parts on the offensive line. Does does that kind of change, make things a little more challenging for you? Um, you know, we have two minutes today. You guys, first team didn't, didn't do a whole lot. Defense yeah. Pressure. Yeah. How does that challenge you as a back when, when they've got so many guys moving in now? Man, it don't really change for us. Um, for me personally, um, it's, it's gonna be a long season. They got, probably ain't gonna look the same every single game. You know what I mean? So, whatever guy, whatever guys trickle in, it got it can't be no drop off at any position. Um, but for us, for me personally, it don't really change my mentality at all. Um, if anything, gotta be more focused, more locked into my job, and my task, and what I gotta do. He was in uh, seven on seven caught one downfield a little bit. Um, is that something you want to do more? I mean, I know we keep asking you about the outlet <laughs> passes and things like that. Yeah. Because it's nice to go downfield. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I feel like that's a part of my game I, I can do. Um, so it was good to kind of get a little scramble drill, get going, and kind of get get free, and that he see that I'm going to be available in them type of situations. Yes. What struck you about Caleb so far, command of the huddle, the leadership he's brought, some of the plays he's made like that. What really kind of stands out with you? Just, just uh, his commitment to get better um, every single day. You kind of see it, and um, it's, he's not complacent. I would say, uh, just the urge to get better, the urge to, you know what I mean, be better than the, the previous practice is what I would say. Um, knowing he doesn't have it all figured out yet, so I would, I would, I would say that. Yeah. I'm not sure how much you like football history, but what was it like for you to go to the Hall of Fame? And was that your first time there? Or? Yeah, that was my first time there. It was cool, real cool. Um, first time there, first time seeing. I, they called the busk or yeah, so it, it was it was nice, a great experience to be a part of. Seeing Devin Hester introducing myself to him, um, that type of thing, uh, it's, it's it's it was a blessing to be there. Hey, Andre, can you talk about your relationship with the new offensive line off the field, specifically how have you connected with Karan and Lagaji? The yeah, it's it's getting better every single day. Um, I feel like O lineman got the and this is on every team my team I've been on, they got the best character on the uh, on the team. But um, me personally, just kind of. Introducing myself over and over, over and over again, um, building a relationship with these guys individually. Um, and I feel like we got a good relationship for sure. Have you spoken to Karan at all? Yes, I talk to everybody. Yeah, make sure I talk to everybody. Defense, offense, staff, everybody. Yeah. We know, we know there were a couple moving parts on the offensive line today. What do you attribute to maybe some of the struggles in the two minute drill? I know Flutes had you guys start that one. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to look at the film to see exactly what it was, but from the outside looking in. Um, Attention to detail, focus, hot, practice out there. Um, and two minutes always at the later part of practice. So just, just locking in and making sure we finish strong. So that's really what I could say. Uh, but I really won't know the ins and outs until I look at the film. Um, but we got to lock in for the whole amount of practice. That's how it's going to be. The tempers that flared, I think it was the period before an 11 on 11. Was yeah. that just heat, long practice? Uh, I'm suggesting that. Yeah, probably a little chirping. I was actually running back. Um, from a little run, I was finishing play on. I just seen guys kind of scuffling, but that ain't really never the answer. That ain't gonna fix nothing. So that's probably a little bit guys tired, stuff like that. But um, that ain't gonna get us nowhere. You have a bit unique. Unique. What's unique about joint practices for you? Unique. Um, it's it's, it's game like. I feel as though that's how I approach it. Um, another team just coming in and uh, getting good work. It's also kind of I wouldn't say taking care of each other, but um. Getting, getting that kind of game feel, you're going against another another team. So your mentality got to be a little different. Can you get better snaps in a joint practice than in a preseason game? Sometimes? Yeah, if, if, even if if you're not playing in the game, for sure. For sure, it's, yeah. Um, you got to treat that just like a game. Like I so said, you're going against another opponent. So your mentality better change. Yeah. You haven't been tackled for eight months or so. How much do you need that type of contact to get ready for the season? I mean, I, that's obviously going to only happen in a preseason game. Yeah, I feel like it's important. I feel like it's important, especially for a back to kind of like, you don't want it, your first actual game to be the first time you're kind of filling things out. So getting that, getting back used to it, the comfortability of, you know what I'm saying, getting up off the ground, stuff like that. Um, not too much, but, yeah. Uh, Nathan said that you could be a physical runner. Is that a game that you, or part of your game that you maybe think, see the whole opponent that you face? 
Uh, yeah, I feel like I've done a couple of plays to where it's all over my shoulder. So I feel like guys know that I can do that. Um, I feel like I can do it all. Man. I feel like I can do it all. Can Eberflus say anything to the team afterwards about the skirmish, fight, whatever you want to call it? No, I feel like when the defense have a day like that, that's a good practice coming from him. So he didn't really say nothing about that. Yeah. DeAndre, you mentioned Caleb's kind of uh, just drive to get better every yeah. day. From when you guys started, what area have you specifically seen him kind of make the most improvement in? I would say um, the, just the, with the offense that we put in, and then kind of the, the looks that he's getting from the defense and being able to check and – that type of thing, um, alerts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. DeAndre, what's your relationship with uh, Shane Waldron like in terms of, you know, the uh, play calling and just seeing how the offense has kind of changed throughout camp? Because you guys are obviously simulating a lot of different things. Uh, it's been good. It's been great, I would say. Getting better every single day, getting stronger. Um, and he's a coach to where it's this open dialogue with all the, all the players as far as comfortability, what plays. Um, if I go out there and do something, asking him, I have no problem with what you see on that, that I make the right read, da 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 da, da that type of thing. So I feel like the relationship is getting strong each and every day. Oh, we tight. It's tight. It's close. I was just talking to KB about it. Like, the way we work collectively, and then, um, that starts with Chad. Chad does a great job, and Jennifer as well does a great job of implementing the, um, the type of mentality that uh, needs to be set, the standard that needs to be set here in that running back room. So... From, from me to Ian, it's, it's no drop off as far as mentality and effort and and uh and practice. Like um, we, I take practice very very serious. So I feel like you got to do it in practice to be able to do that on Sundays, Thursdays, and Mondays. So and everybody really got the same mentality in that room. You think Chad's gonna beat you downfield one of these times? It seems like he's right behind you on some of those plays when he's running after. <laughs> For sure, he don't stretch or nothing. He just get right to it. <laughs> yeah. So I know he's the running track. He be looking a little fast out there. He might got line it up one of these days. Yeah. All set? All right, have a good day, y'all. <laughs>